Hello, I'm co-founder of the Chesapeake Astronomical Society here in Pennsylvania, which is a group highly dedicated to observational astronomy for the past 30 years. Over the years, every spring uh, or pre-spring, uh, I do a presentation for the group on spring galaxies. And in almost all those presentations, I would choose galaxies that were unusual or challenges, uh, galaxies that some may never heard of before, and some of the members, some of the members never seen before. And I thought with this presentation, I'd be a little different. And the reason I thought about it was, you know, not every member can get out to a dark side, especially during midweek with work or, or so on. So I thought, oh, why don't if I do something about observing galaxies from home? that on a beautiful spring night that you can take your telescope out and observe some of the brighter galaxies from home. And I did two nights with two very different telescopes in size and, and uh, type. Uh, the first night was with a 4-inch F10 refractor, and the second night was with a 12.5-inch F4.8 dot. Both nights were very, very good as far as transparency and pretty good seeing. I also have here, uh, as you can see, it says two nights observing spring galaxies from my own and more. I did include at the end of the uh, presentation or end, end of the home presentation uh, some interesting uh, galaxies and challenges uh, that I still had to throw in for those who uh, like to observe from the darker uh, observing sites with very large telescopes. So anyway, um, here's an aerial shot of home, uh, which my wife and I moved into back in November. Uh, she's co-owner of a winery, and um, this is be the new home base of the winery. It's about 17 acres. Uh, the skies are pretty good. It's um, not a dark site, a good, you know, a good dark site, but not bad. Um, we're about six miles northeast of Reading, Pennsylvania, uh, but our elevation is much higher than the, than the, than the town itself. So uh, the skies um, are, are, are surprisingly dark for where it's situated. Here's the view from uh, the back part of uh, the residence area, um, which we call Stonekeep Manor. This is where my wife and I live. Um, it was built in 1805. And you can see there's a deck here in the back. And this is the first night I set up the 4-inch F10 refractor on the deck. Um, that's a pretty good uh, swath of sky, too. There's some... Uh, very large fir trees uh, just to the south or of the deck, which would be to the left side of this photograph. Um, but overall, you know, I still had a fairly good view of much, much of the sky. So the first galaxy uh, I went for is um, 2903 in Leo. Um, I'm using the online Deep Sky browser uh, so I can punch in the uh, telescope's focal length, the focal length of the eyepiece used in the field of view. It gives you a magnification of just over 83. Um, 2093 is uh, a beautiful spiral galaxy in the head of Leo, and I call it one of those early spring galaxies. You know, spring's coming when you are able to get a good observation of this galaxy. Um, I was, um, wasn't, wasn't knowing how much I was really gonna get out of it with the Florence refractor, with the little bit brighter skies, but actually uh, it, it did well. Uh, it seemed like the, this magnification was a good magnification to see some detail in the galaxy where it showed a bright core, it showed its elongated core area, it's like a barred spiral. And the outer disk of it, a um, you know, little bit of modeling, um, showed some size to it. Uh, I was quite pleased on the uh, on this first view. 
I next went to Ursa Major and uh, another favorite galaxy of mine. And uh, it's another early spring galaxy, 2841. Uh, this was actually uh, one of the, this was actually first light uh, back in the late 90s for my 22 inch F4 5 uh, Dob. Um, and of course, to then show, and that was from also a dark side, it didn't quite show this night with a four inch refractor from home uh, as well as the 22. But um, out here again, uh, it, it really showed the galaxy fairly well. Uh, 2841 is a very bright core, a very intense bright core. Uh, it's, it's an inclined spiral galaxy, so its surface brightness is, is relatively high. Um, the galaxy, the galaxy showed in the four inch refractor, um, you know, fairly well. It stood out fairly well. Um, this seemed the nine millimeter eyepiece seemed to do best with this galaxy, uh, and uh, so it's a highly recommended galaxy to view uh, from home if you're stuck at home and you don't have can't get to some of the darker sky, uh, darker sites. I uh, next uh, swung the four inch refractor up in the coma, and a favorite galaxy of mine, uh, NGC 4414. Uh, it's a relatively bright galaxy, it's a high surface brightness, uh, but it's small. Um, and as you can see, I put in a 7 millimeter eyepiece, which gave me a magnification of just about 143 power. But I was able to uh, see a nice bright core of this galaxy, a nice little tiny nucleus. Um, the disk of the galaxy stood out very well, a little shaped disk, and a bit of modeling, a little bit of modeling. I should add also that um, a couple weeks prior to this uh, night, I was up at one of our local dark sites and I had my 12 and a half inch dom. And uh, just so happens that night that the comet 45P was passing through the field of view of 4414. Well, the comet was uh, fairly faint and diffuse, but uh, we would look at it maybe every half hour or so to see the movement uh, relative to the background galaxy and, and stars, um, which was pretty neat. But hey, I'm a, a galaxy nut, and I enjoyed the view of 4414 a lot more through the 12 and a half. Um, showed a lot of detail, uh, a lot of modeling, and uh, it's a really nice galaxy. Highly recommended. And here's a Hubble view that you might have seen before of 4414. And uh, it really is a, a neat galaxy, a beautiful galaxy, a very compact spiral galaxy. But a lot going on there. Um, and you can see why, uh, in this picture, why we do see a lot of modeling, even in relatively small telescopes. Um, next, I uh, moved on to a favorite pair of galaxies that I really enjoy viewing, that I've enjoyed many times over the years with various te of my telescopes. And um, I thought this was also a good uh, challenge here. Um, what we have here is 4490, which is a very nice, bright galaxy, spiral galaxy. And its little companion galaxy, 4485. Um, I used a 7 millimeter eyepiece here, so it's a little higher magnification than I have been using. And the reason is I wanted to see if I could actually bring out or see 4485 uh, from this location with the smaller telescope. And I could. It was not uh, easy, uh, but I could see it as a faint patch of light with a slight brightening to it. 4490 uh, was actually really nice. Um, you know, it showed its its football, its football shape, the bright core, uh, and it stood out really well. Uh, much like you see in the photograph here, uh, as far as its shape, uh, you could actually see that that longer arm that reached out almost to 4485. And here's a Hubble image of 4485, and you can see there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, no doubt with the interaction with the much larger galaxy. And you can see a lot of uh, young blue stars, star clouds. There's also uh, some nebula there, and there's a very bright nebula, which is towards its tip there. And actually, uh, if you look on the lower right side, that's part 
of uh, 4490. My last view of the night, because um, it was getting pretty late, and it was during the week, um, was M81 and M82, um, and also the smaller Galaxy 3077, GC 3077. I used the wide field eyepiece here uh, at 50 power, and the view, I got all three galaxies, man, no problem. And the view was really nice. M81 and M82 stood out very nicely. Uh, 3077 um, was small, round, with a slightly bright core, brighter core. Um, this is when my wife came out, actually, to make sure that I was ready to go to bed uh, or, or at least pack it up for the night. And um, she took a, a view in the telescope and was quite pleased with the image. Um, she was actually, uh, didn't expect that, this view. Um, and uh, she, we, we also, um, one of the things in the winery, when the winery uh, at this location is up and running, we want to do uh, public star parties. And that was one of the other things that I wanted to test uh, these couple nights was, you know, how well we could actually show people deep sky objects. And obviously, uh, I think uh, it's been answered is that pretty well. Uh, so we'll be able to do public star parties here. My second night, um, I observed in the front uh, lawn of uh, Stone Keep Manor um, and really had a really nice night and this time it was with the 12 and a half inch f4.8 Dob. It's a homemade uh, telescope and uh, this was uh, I, I kind of felt that I was going to get some nice views with the larger telescope and of course, the what I was getting out of the four-inch refractor, you know, some nights back, prior to, um, I figured, okay, well, the twelve and a half is is really going to show me some stuff, and uh, it really did. It was a really nice night, and I, I kind of led off the night with a another favorite interactive pair, uh, NGC thirty-two twenty-seven and NGC thirty-two twenty-six. Uh, thirty-two twenty-seven is a spiral galaxy. Uh, thirty-two twenty-six is an elliptical galaxy and um, it really uh, it really gave a nice view with this uh, magnification Use the nine millimeter eyepiece which is just around 170 power uh, both galaxies exhibited a very bright bright cores uh, 3227 actually had a very nice bright stellar core to it um, both galaxies exhibited some nice shape and uh, I was real pleased with this view. I also backed down the magnification to uh, be able to get the uh, NGC 3222, and as you can see it here in this image, outside the field of view of the, the 9mm, but uh, I dropped it down to an 18mm, which I'm not showing here, but um, and I was able to get all, all three galaxies in there, which was a really nice view. And um, then I went uh, to a galaxy that I've seen uh, a couple times before uh, with larger telescopes with a 22 and, and uh, from a dark site. And it's a really nice, bright spiral galaxy. Um, here uh, this night, um, the 12 and a half really had a nice view of it also. Um, you know, you can see it's an inclined spiral. It showed a bright core and a nice bright disc. Uh, it, slightly, it gave me some modeling too. Um, so I really enjoyed this this galaxy. It's a nice nice galaxy to go for. It's one of the dimmer galaxies that uh, spiral galaxies that I've gone for this night. But uh, it it was really a nice view. And then I put uh, an eighteen millimeter in and drop down the magnification, of course, and wider field of view. And you can see uh, 3705 on the left side of the uh, field of view. And there's this uh, nice uh, edge on galaxy, NGC 3692. And uh, I could see it uh, 
is a faint sliver of light with a slight brightening in its core area. I also uh, talked this night because I wanted to make sure that uh, I wasn't losing some of the uh, the observers with the giant telescopes in the club. I wanted, to, but I wanted to make sure that uh, they can go for their very faint ones and and, and so on. As you can see up in the upper left hand corner, there's 3705, and there's an IC uh, group here, IC uh, 696 group. Um, and I, I've looked at this before, this 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 group, and uh, it is really nice. It, it is really nice from the dark side, of course, and then the 22. And I can see all these galaxies that you see in this image here. Um, the thin edge on really is stark contrast to the other galaxies. This is a nice bright, nice bright galaxy. Um, it's easy to see in a small telescope, even in light fluid skies, as a high surface brightness. And in fact, I looked at it uh, in that previous night with the four inch, but I just included it here with a 12 and a half, because the 12 and a half, it was just really vivid, uh, a really nice uh, view. And you can see there's a nice bright field star uh, near it. Kind of gave you almost a double star view to it, to where the galaxy, of course, is that's large fuzz to it with a brighter core. But overall, it's, a, it's not a spectacular galaxy, but it's a bright galaxy and it's easy to see. This, uh, this grouping uh, became a favorite uh, view of the night. Um, I backed down the magnification a little bit uh, with the 12 millimeter, which is 127 power. And uh, the three uh, brighter galaxies stood out very well, and, and with the brightest one, uh, NGC 3607, and then just north of that, uh, 3608, and then just uh, southwest uh, of 3607 is the smaller 3605. Um, I really uh, enjoyed this view. This was one of my favorite views of the night with the three galaxies. Um, you can see also there's a little PGC galaxy, uh, very faint, small, which I've seen with the 22 looking at this group before, and uh, not with the 12 and a half here at, at this night at this location. I also, uh, if you move farther west, you can see there's another NGC galaxy, uh, which I did. I, I was able to get uh, the galaxy uh, just by swinging the telescope slightly west, almost due west. And uh, just a, it's a smaller galaxy. It's a little brighter than 3605, but not as bright as the other two. This is another uh, really beautiful uh, view that I had this night. And this was the only time I used uh, a premium eyepiece. I, I kind of stayed with uh, very uh, standard eyepieces. Uh, but for this view, I, I popped in a, a Type 1, a rare Type 1 11 Negler, uh, which I really, really like. And no, it's not for sale. Um, but it really gave, I thought, a perfect view of these four galaxies. Uh, 4274 is the large spiral. And uh, it, was, it really gave uh, a beautiful contrasting view to, compared to the other galaxies. Um, bright core, uh, large elongated disk, uh, slight modeling to it. And then uh, below that the next brightest galaxy is a local galaxy. It's NGC 4278. And it stood out very very well in contrast of the spiral uh, above it. Um, the next galaxy just near there is 4283, NGC 4283, uh, which is m much smaller, but not real dim. It actually looks like a small fuzzy star at this magnification. And then uh, the dimmest is NGC 4286, which uh, this night uh, looked like a very faint, slightly elongated glow. But I uh, was able to get all four galaxies in this one field of view, which was really nice. Um, 
my final galaxy that I looked at this night um, is 4314, uh, NGC 4314, which is a face on barred spiral, as you can see. Uh, when I put the, tel the telescope on to this galaxy, right away it looks like a edge on galaxy with a slight bulge, central bulge. Um, and then if you kept looking closer, you saw this really dim disk around it, um, which of course are the spiral arms. Now, um, with this bright, brighter skies, uh, I could not resolve uh, the arms. It looked, it pretty much looked like an edge on a galaxy with a, a glow around it, a very faint glow around it. Um, I looked back at my notes to see if I've ever looked at this galaxy with the 22 from uh, one of the dark sites, and it turns out I've never have. Um, so the, I promised myself that uh, this spring, and that uh, when I had the 22 out, that I would be uh, looking at this galaxy and, and seeing if I could resolve the spiral arms out of it. But it's really a nice. It was. It really is a nice galaxy. Like I said, the first thing you're gonna, if when your telescope hits it, um, you're gonna see it as it looks like, looking like an edge on galaxy. Uh, it's pretty bright. I mean, through this, the core area is very bright, and the bar is very bright. Uh, like I said, the main issue will be trying to get those spiral arms. And uh, and of course, like I mentioned about uh, challenging galaxies and darker skies. Uh, I have uh, a couple of here that um, one I've, I've seen before and the other ones I haven't looked at before. Um, but the first one is NGC 3588. Uh, and I'm into interacting galaxies. Um, and this is right almost directly south of Delta Leo. And if you look closely at this, at this photograph, you can also notice it looks like a moth. So it kind of reminds you of like a moth flying around a bright light. So, hey, the moth galaxy, NGC 3588, the moth galaxy. Well, anyway, so I punched the numbers in here. That's the focal length of my 22, uh, 2504 millimeters. And uh, I put in a five millimeter, uh, 110 degree field eyepiece it gives me just over 500 power and you can see it's 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 still small it's pretty small but uh, this is the this would be a galaxy I've seen this before actually I've seen this in my 8 inch refractor um, the key to it is to make sure that you have enough magnification and you have do have good light control uh, with your telescope to make sure you don't have any glare coming from Delta Leo. Uh, good eyepiece, good clean optics, and high enough magnification should be able to help you uh, pick out this galaxy uh, away from the, the bright glare of Delta Leo. And here's a up-close view, and you can see it does look like a moth. It looks like a moth. So, uh, yeah. Being around Delta Leo, and uh, it does uh, look like a moth. We can call it the moth galaxy. Next was an uh, an IC pair, IC nine sixty A and B, um, and I even punched uh, the four millimeter in here with an eighty two degree field. And now we're over six hundred power, and you can see they're fairly small. Um, I've gone back on my notes. I might have looked at this before. I couldn't find it in my notes. Um, I don't. I I don't see it in any of my notes with the twenty-two. I um, I I did, I might have seen it with the twelve and a half, but I just cannot find any information that I did view this before. So I thought, okay, well, let's go for this. Uh, this would be another uh, interesting. Uh, pair to go for, and uh, if you look here, here's a close-up view of the pair, and uh, you can see the southern uh, galaxy 
is a lot dimmer, but a lot of information there. It, to me, and I mentioned it to uh, the Chestmont members the, the, at the meeting when I did this presentation, that it that that galaxy kind of reminds you of a Romulan ship from the early Star Trek. All right, so there you go, the Romulan ship galaxy. Now I have a, uh, a map here and showing uh, part of Coma. And um, you can see the Great Edge on uh, NGC 4565 to the far left, which is my personal favorite galaxy. Um, and there's 4494, uh, the bright galaxy that we talked about uh, just a few moments ago. And then you can see that box. This is from Wicca Sky. Um, and you can see a box, and there's not really much in that box. But I found this uh, interesting here. There's a pair of IC galaxies. It's uh, the one to the west is IC 3185. And the one to the east of that is IC 3189. And I thought, wow, this looks like an interesting pair of galaxies. Are they a true pair? Now, if you can see here, again, I punched in the numbers. I have a four millimeter eyepiece, 82 degree field. Uh, the resistors are power, and they're pretty small. So um, it's probably going to take um, a bit if you don't have uh, digital setting circles. If you still do star hopping, it's, it may take a bit to find this. But uh, uh, I recommend you know, going like the Wicca Sky and, and printing out. Uh, the map, but also maybe just the actual wide field image of uh, of this area, and actually do uh, star hopping from there to find the pair. Uh, it doesn't look like it's too hard, from what I, what I see. But anyway, I thought it was interesting. I looked at this pair close up uh, in, a, in a standard color, um, and you can see they're different colors. Uh, of galaxies. Now we're not going to see the colors with the, with the eye through the telescope. They're much too faint. Um, but I just thought it was interesting. So I kind of did a little bit a little bit of research on these in this pair. And I see 3185, which is the bluish color galaxy here on the right. Um, it's a little over 300 million light years away. And the other galaxy on the left, I see 3189 um, is over 700 million light years away. So even though they look similar in size uh, and, and even in distance, they are two radically different uh, size and distance uh, galaxies. Uh, the, the I see 3185 is around six, 600, excuse me, 60,000. Uh, light years in diameter, and the background galaxy, the which is a larger galaxy, obviously, is around 100,000 light years in diameter if the um, distances are correct. But uh, I thought that was interesting that here you have these two galaxies that look very similar and uh, similar in size, um, and I thought that. Well, they look an actual pair, but they turn out not to be a genuine pair. Uh, but I think it would be a nice challenge to go for these guys. Hey, enjoy spring galaxy season.